I just wanted to go play golf. Yeah. I didn't have any other choice. Yeah. I had to make this work if I want to actually pursue my dreams. Yeah. You have to be able to live while you play golf. Who do you think will win in a golf match? Tiger Woods with a day job or Tiger Woods where his job is golf? Tell yeah, me about yeah. that process for somebody listening who want to actually get into golf and think they're going to go pro. Do you feel as though you have the best game to compete with the guys that are on that level? And then after that, it's going to cost you anywhere from 100 to 150,000 in a year to sponsor yourself to play golf. Because also you have a caddy. It has to work or it has to work. Welcome to an episode of Circle of Greatness. I'm your host, Nehemiah Davis. And today I got a special episode coming for you, man. This is what I like to call a category king. When I'm talking about dominating the golf industry on the field, off the field, just crushing. I met this brother at a networking event with LeBron and I say just to see his journey and see them grow this company in the short three, four years since 2019 is absolutely amazing. So I get the chance to bring my brother on the set. You're going to break down some of this game, man. Olajuwon, what up, man? Eastside Golf. What's, what's up, man? Thanks for coming you. in, bro. Good to see you. Appreciate that, you. That new set, me, bro. fire, bro. Appreciate yeah, you. You see, I'm repping, man. You. you know, I got the East Side Very on, y'all. Eastsidegolf.com. Y'all better get with it, bro. For sure. Man, for thanks sure. for getting on, man. So, so, Thanks for having me, bro. Man, just, I was reading up and I just been watching you and I'm assuming the brand been around prior to me knowing for 10 years. Like I'm thinking it's mm -hmm. been around a long time. What y'all been able to do since January 1st, 2019, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Till yeah. now is like- June 1st, two, 2019, June my birthday. 1st, that's what I meant, yeah, June yeah, 1st, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, it's been legendary, bro. Mm -hmm. Like like how, like tell, tell the people a little bit about the brand and how did the idea come up? I know you was, golfing and then you came up with the idea of starting this. So give yeah. give the people a little bit of background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Olajuwon Ajanaku, founder yeah. of Eastside Golf. Um, been playing golf since I was six years old. Mm. Uh, I was born in Houston okay. when, I, okay. when I was uh, Olajuwon, of yeah. course. But started playing golf when I was six years old, moved to East Atlanta. Uh, that's when the name of the company comes from. Uh, all the way through middle school, high school, um, played golf. Even when I was 13, got a uh, private golf lesson from Tiger Woods and Earl Woods. Wow. Yeah, when I was 13, sponsored wow. by Nike in wow. full circle. But wow. uh, then when I turned 18, ended up getting a scholarship to Morehouse College, quit the basketball team, left that behind. And uh, Morehouse, I mean, did that for four years, you know, graduated in 2012. And we won a national championship in 2010, wow. the only national championship that Morehouse has wow. in golf. And after that, I wanted to turn pro in golf, but couldn't find any sponsors. You know, uh, won player of the year for conference three times, wanted to turn pro and, you know, played professional golf for two years. But like I said, after that, couldn't couldn't afford it anymore. Yeah. You know, I was taking up odd jobs. I was literally like caddying yeah. up at Druid Hills, yeah. you know, not too far away and had to take on my corporate career, you know, out so. I was in commercial finance for nine years. Yep, you was an accountant, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was in actually San Diego, but uh, uh, my territory was the Midwest. So I lived in Detroit okay. at the time. And so I uh, financed tractors, trailers, construction equipment, uh, motor coaches, you know. So I basically my job was to build uh, tractor trailer companies you know, make the help these owner operators basically build their company from the bottom all the way up. So did that for nine years, got home one day, fully suited. I just like, this ain't it. Yeah. You know, I want to play golf. But like I said, I knew it'd be hard to find sponsors. So I was like, you know, at the end of the day, let me just make a logo. Yeah. Logo that you see, you know, jeans, sweatshirt, yeah. cubulin chain. It's me yeah. um, at the end of the day. But I was just going to put it on my polo, put it on my bag. Um, but I showed it to my business partner, Earl. He was like, yo, you need to put down a T-shirt. Mm. Put it on a T-shirt, gilding, ironed it on, went downtown Detroit. I maybe got stopped in two hours, like 150, 200 times. Wow. You know, just like, who are you? Yeah. What's that logo? Where can I get it? And do you play golf? Mm. Knew I had something, but I didn't know what it was, you know? So told Earl, he was just like, run with it. I've always been into fashion, but I didn't major in fashion, major in accounting, minor in finance. But went ahead and made about eight SKUs. First, I'd say 3,000 orders that shipped out from my apartment in Detroit myself. Wow. You know, I mean, it was, I knew what society would think about it. You know, I thought, I knew this was a new logo. Everybody, yeah, yeah well, you play golf. So, but I didn't know what the golf world would think about it. Yeah. And that was the whole thing. But the golf mean, world is not black, really. Right? No, nah, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. I mean, yeah, not at all. It's starting to become more diverse. But, of yeah, 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 yeah. But at the end of the day, 
I started the brand because I was tired of being told no. Mm. You know, I was like, why not say yes to my own dreams and take the entrepreneur route and sponsor myself yeah. at the end of the day? Let me ask you, because I heard you mention multiple times. So being pro, I, I'm not familiar with golf like mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. I, I go to the driving range at Top Golf. That's probably the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've been to, a, I used to go to the golf and just hit the balls, but I don't, I'm not, of course, don't know what I'm doing. For sure. But you said in order to go pro, you got to get sponsored. Tell, tell me a little bit, because I don't know the, I assume you go pro, you get picked up. So it's different from the other sports. You got to get sponsored to go. Tell me yeah, about yeah. that process for somebody listening who want to actually get in the golf and think they're going to go pro. Like, what is that process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> well, first off, you have to have a game for it. Facts. And the whole thing is affording an entire year of professional golf. You have to pay entry fees, mm -hmm. airfare, travel. You have yeah. to pay rent. Yeah. You got to have a membership to practice somewhere. Mm. If one of your clubs break, these are expensive. Some of these clubs, yeah. you know, the professional clubs, a shaft on a club yeah. might cost you six or $700. Wow. You know, just for one club. Yeah. So it's all about- How many clubs in the back? 14. Okay. 14 is max, but it's all about you know, do you feel as though you have the best game to compete with the guys that are on that level? And then after that, it's going to cost you anywhere from 100 to 150,000 in a year to sponsor yourself to play golf. Because wow. also you have a caddy. So when the caddy travels, he has to eat, you know, he has the wow. either he's going to be staying in your hotel room or you got to pay for another So you don't room. just pick up a caddy everywhere you go. You bring your own caddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to feel comfortable out there on the course, mm. you know, like you got a guy that talks to you a certain type of way. It might be some guys have their psychiatrist yeah. out there. Don't know anything about so golf. So caddy's more like, I just thought that was somebody who drives the cart and pa what passes you your clubs. Yeah. But it's almost like assistant. They do need to kind of know you. Like yeah. it, it helps for them. Absolutely. Okay. Like Tiger Woods, yeah. I believe most of his tournaments, he had like the same caddy, yeah. you know, and him and his caddy may have had like 50 wins together. Right. You know, so, so why would it, I change that? Absolutely. Right. absolutely. Now he you got to be able to sponsor you. a second person to be able to come on and just road trip. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. But at the end of the day, I mean, entry fees and everything, you have to be able to live while you play golf. Yeah. The example I use is who do you think will win in a golf match? Tiger Woods with a day job? Or Tiger Woods, where his job is golf. Yeah, oh, Tiger Woods' job is you golf. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same with professional golfers. Like, their job has to be golf. Yeah. So you said, I'm going to put the logo on the shirt. I'm going to sponsor myself. What happened after that? Yeah. Um, man, it was some time, but I basically marketed the company. It was just me. I had one guy to... Uh, that was January. That was, excuse me, June, June, June 1st, 1st 2019. 2019. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean... Earl didn't come on to the company until about a year and a half after I started mm -hmm. the brand, yeah. you know, and it was I was marketing to get more diverse people into the brand. So a lot of the the posts that I did were towards basketball players, football players, baseball players. But then also talking about if you look at this logo, what do you think he would talk about out on the golf course? Right. So I'm literally talking about the news. I'm posting Stephen A. Smith, Steph Curry, you know. Talking about things that we would be interested in, but Did then you involving golf. With golf. Yet? No, I see not he. Uh, I see he. Not yeah, yet, he got, though. Not yet. I see he. He. He taking it serious. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. Now. He got game. Yeah, he got game. He, he probably got good game. at anything. He. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He put his mind to. Though. Yeah. If he yeah. if he took way more time and just focused on you know left basketball, yeah. and just, I think he'd have a chance for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's gonna leave ball though. Yeah, I don't think maybe when ball over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, but yeah, just marketed the company to a point where uh, C J Paul, Chris Paul's brother, actually reached out to us yep. and was just like, I love what you guys are doing. You know, it, it makes sense, but can you play? You know, at the end of the day. So me and Earl had to go out to Cali and uh, play golf with him. And, you know, I shot, I think I shot like 68, 67, and he shot like 73, 74. So he saw that we had a game and he saw that this all made sense that we were valid, but he wanted to introduce us to the VP of Jordan, who uh, name is Gentry Humphrey. Wow. And so from there, end up playing golf with Gentry about four or five times. I mean, at the end of those rounds, he was just like, yo, love what you guys are doing. Um, you guys are authentic, but then you play golf at a high level. You know, do you want your own shoe? 
And I'm just like, what do you, what do you mean? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 I want yeah. my own shoe. You ain't got to ask. But yeah, it was a Air Jordan 4. Yeah. And uh, right now it's actually, I think a size 12 is actually trading on StockX for about 7,000. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's full crazy. circle moment, just going after my dreams, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, and I'm still chasing them. I mean, next year I plan on turning back pro, mm. you know, and having the the company automated to where we have all the the employees working and know their roles and know their positions and then just scaling the company from there. Hey, you're looking at this and you're probably enjoying this episode and the strategies and the gems that I give you. This is just a fraction of what you learn in my mastermind, right? I would love for you to be able to learn more information on how he's able to help Carter Cofield make a million dollars in one single day, how he's able to help Rochelle Parks make over $500,000 in a day, learn how he's able to help Tevin grow his Instagram following from 70,000 followers to upwards to 200,000 followers within two months and again those results are not typical let me be very clear but they are possible for those who are willing to put work in energy and effort if you're looking at this video right now i want you to go to the website mastermind with neo neo.com so you can apply to see if you're a good fit for our mastermind this is specifically for someone looking to grow their digital business right even though y'all probably even know David Shan, Sleepers for Suckers, he's inside of my mastermind. You probably know Sonya, the student loan doctor, he's inside of my mastermind. You probably know Darius Daniels, he's inside of my mastermind. Those are just a few more people who are absolutely crushing it as a result of being inside of the community. So listen, if you're looking at this, right, and you're probably looking at the episode like, man, you're dropping so much gems but can you imagine how many gyms you'll get when you're actually inside of the environment, when you're tapped into the community? What I want you guys to go to right now is mastermindwithneo.com so you do not miss out on your opportunity to get tapped in. You will have to apply, you will have to get on the call, and hopefully you make the cut to be a part of what we got going on. I'll see you on the inside. Let's get back to the episode. So, so, so powerful. And that's why I tell people relationships can take you places money can't go. So initially met CP3, brother. I see CP3 on the cover of the website, too. That's yeah, dope. Yeah. He then introduced <clears throat> you to the man who runs Jordan. You played a few rounds, showed him that you that guy, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. ended up getting a deal with Jordan. Yeah. That's crazy. And I guess lastly, I'm sorry, I meant no, I left this out, yeah. but uh, after Gentry, he was like, yo, I need for you guys to uh, talk to MJ, yeah. you know? And so we had to pitch to Michael Jordan, wow. and... Uh, it was about 30 minutes, you know, 25, 30 minutes. And basically told him my story. And at the end of it, he was just like, you guys have two amazing stories. At Jordan Brand, we tell the best stories. Looked at his team. Have we signed him yet? Mm. You know? And from there, I designed the first uh, Jordan that came out. It was a, a few hundred pairs. And then we had a collection to come out of uh, five Jordans last year. And I named that the Red Clay Collection. And uh, this year we have three more Jordans coming out actually next month in September. Wow. So that's, man, congratulations, no, bro. That's appreciate that. A lot can happen in a short period of time. Oh, yeah. When you talk about marketing, because part of the show, we, we, we literally get into the nitty gritty of business. I want to hear some of the, because we got people who are running brands right now and trying mm -hmm. to figure it out. Like your growth in four years is unbelievable right and i know i know a huge part of it was relationships but what are some things that you're doing marketing wise that's keeping you ahead of the game what are some of the things you're doing marketing wise that is really making you a household name like i was on instagram like three months ago and i saw the store open up in japan i'm like yeah. my guy got a store in japan yeah you know what yeah. i mean so that to yeah. me i'm like yo this cr and, and i thought it was around yet like so many years mm -hmm. because of that footprint that you now have so mm -hmm. what are some marketing tips that or strategies that y'all been doing where you like man this 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 one hit for us absolutely like i mean i'll first start off with the messaging mm -hmm. i mean what's that message that i'm trying to convey to yeah. the customer yeah um when you talk about black history in golf, what are the things that they did that they weren't successful at or weren't even allowed to do that we can do now and and put ourselves in to change the game, you know? And when I talk about things like that, as far as even tournaments, I mean, we signed two pro golfers, mm. you know, that gives us validness in the actual game. I'm actually a pro golfer. Earl's one of the best teachers in America. And doing all of these things seamlessly it shows that we can live in two places at once. We make streetwear, yeah. but then we also make golf wear. So this is the first time you'll see, um, let's say a staple sweatshirt, our staple core sweatshirt 
being sold at like Whistling Straits yeah. in Wisconsin, yeah. probably or, uh, one of the best golf courses in the nation. But then also in uh, up in YC at Fat Joe's Boutique. So you'll see, a, you'll see a 7 year old white man wearing the same thing a 14 year old black boy is wearing. Yeah. You know, but then I even give you this this tip as well. When I first started this brand and how it grew so quick, I wasn't really focusing on, and yeah, I, I tagged some of those, uh, I would say social handles that I wanted the attention of, but who runs those pages mm. or who owns the company? You know, at the end of the day, I got on LinkedIn and I'm trying to find these people. Mm. I'm trying to connect with these people. I mean, this is really a short, short way to just get straight to the person, do your research. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, these are the people that make decisions, build those relationships, go to as many networking events as you can, meet these people, because then you're gonna start meeting those people that make the decisions at the end of the day. And that, that really catapulted the business, I would say, because I got the logo and I thought the, and it's the logo at the end of the day as well. When I get this logo right in front of somebody, it's an immediate reaction every time. Yeah. It's either I really love it or you know, I, that doesn't sit well with me. Mm. I've gotten both of them. And if you're right here, right on the line, you have a bunch of questions, yeah. you know? So that's what we wanted. And I mean, it's uh, as, as long as we continue to stay authentic and continue to tell, you know, authentic stories that have actually happened, tell the truth, I mean, that's what culture respects, and that's what we've been doing. Yeah, and it's funny. I I, I saw Jeezy wearing a brand. Yeah. Um, everybody's wearing a brand, bro. I feel mm -hmm. like y'all are responsible for helping people get on the golf course. Like you're you're working with Khaled now. Like when he gets behind something, <laughs> that man's the way he promotes something, bro. Yeah. Every, yeah. We're going golfing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's go golfing. Yeah. Let's go golfing. That man's wild. Yeah. That man's wild. And, but when when you get tapped in with him, that dude's a, a major marketer, bro. Oh, yeah. So um, what's some of the favorite, <clears throat> what are some people who you haven't played golf with that you're looking for? I know we talked about Steph, mm -hmm. um, anybody else that, cause I'm, I would like to go back to this episode and be like, I remember he said, yeah, I, yeah. I would like to, you know, shoot golf with this person that was done. Anybody that you're looking forward to? Um, I would say a couple people, uh, Michael Jordan. Yeah. You know, I've had dinner with him. Yeah. I had smoked cigars with him, I had yeah. drinks with him, yeah. some Coro. Um, and then Obama, mm. you know, Barack Obama. Yeah, I've buddy. heard that he wears East Side. Yeah, yeah, you gotta take some pictures in that. Yeah, but uh, I know he wears East Side. I don't, I'm, I'm gonna have somebody to get this over to him. Yeah. Um, Obama, if you listen to yeah. this, we need them <laughs> photos and we need you to go play with my guys. Yes, sir. Elijah and Earl on that court. Yes, man. sir. I mean, on that, on, on the green. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, and then lastly, um, I would say Tiger Woods. Mm. You know, I want him to get back healthy. Yeah. I want him to compete again. Yeah. I mean, he's not competing currently. No, nah, not right now. He's a little banged up. Okay. You know, but I want him to get back healthy to a point where we've well, been you know, doing he this 50 compete. years about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's yeah. been he's been at it for a little for a little minute. Um, but he has so much knowledge of the game and so many things that he can teach so many people, diverse people, just about the game and about that mental challenge and that mental strength. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's different. Yeah, he's different. He's the reason I would say that I play golf. Wow, that's great. so. Since Tiger is like people's MJ to basketball, essentially. Yeah. 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 yeah, crazy. yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely people's the golf MJ. Yeah. I mean, he's, Tiger Woods has even said, I mean, he would want to be the Michael Jordan of golf. Mm. Yeah, when he was a lot younger, but he definitely said that. Yeah. What is the uh, what is one of the plans when you go back pro? Is it what is the what is the reason now? Because I know you building a brand and everything like this. Is it to further get that message out? Is it uh, I know you actually truly love golf as mm -hmm. well, but why go pro again now for you? Yeah. Um. For me, I'm gonna be honest, like, um, I mean, Eastside Golf isn't about me, mm. to be honest. Yeah. I mean, this is about giving the game to so many other people that can take advantage of it yeah. and better themselves. Golf helped me so much when I was younger. I mean, you know, father not being there as much as uh, he would like have been, but, you know, I learned from so many people out on the golf course. They're, I mean, entrepreneurs, accountants, lawyers, doctors. Yeah. These are the people that I'm playing golf with every day, yeah, yeah. you know, and they have kids, you know, so I'm talking to them as a young man, just looking for guidance, mm. 
mm. at the end of the day, you know. But then on top of that, too, golf is something that teaches you morals and values. I mean, I literally used to hit balls until my hands bleed. Wow. You know, like so dedication. hard work and perseverance and dedication and morality, accountability, all those things you learn being on time, like all those things you learn yeah. from being in the golf realm. Yeah. You know, hey, when golf. I said earlier, when I said um, Raina messaged me, Elijah, I was here, I like, I know he gonna be on time. He came to my birthday party on time, yeah. everything. And then you mentioned, <laughs> so I know that's just part of your upbringing in terms yeah. of being on time. Like Absolutely. that's important. Just keeping your word, essentially. It's just, Absolutely. It's huge. Mm -hmm. um, what's some things right now that as the brand grows and other people watching this who are building brands, what's some things that they should be looking out for it? Like, I don't know if you're facing any growth hurdles or anything mm -hmm. like that. I know you're building a team, like it's a global brand. What are some things that y'all could be going through right now that you, man, I didn't know this was gonna happen that somebody could possibly avoid? Hmm. Um. Some things that people can avoid are definitely, I mean, try things. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a man, trial and error yeah. with this thing is yeah. huge. Yeah. So many times I've tried things and just threw it out after I tried it. That doesn't work, yeah. you know? Me too. But so many things I've tried that <laughs> nobody told me or that I'm trying that nobody really knows that works. You know, it might be small things inside of a caption or a new, um, I would say, way of looking at golf, trying to just bring people in. Um, that's a good question. It's it's really difficult because it's only just trial and error. You got you, it. It's so many things that's going to work for Eastside Golf that won't work for so many other brands. Yeah. They're the top you know, morals and values, but the top things that work for every single brand, like, yeah, you have to have a dope logo. Yeah, you have yeah. to have your just do it. Our, our just do it tagline is be authentic. Mm. You know, you have to have those things and then continue to be that yeah. throughout the course of your business. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, just building that team is yeah. something that is really important. What does your team important. look like now? Um, you say team. Uh, we've had to let some people go, yeah. you know, um, just That's to grow. Sometimes. Yeah, 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 just to grow. Um, and on top of that, me getting my vision because i'm creative director yeah. i named earl my best friend ceo of the business yeah. and i'm now I'm creative director because i want the point the vision i want to point the company where to where i always seen golf going yeah you know me and earl i mean that's our goal is to make more little elijah ones and earls mm -hmm. you know i mean even going to morehouse you know graduating having a corporate job and then and then learning as much as you can throughout that corporate job. Yep. That's something else that I learned. I mean, both of us had corporate jobs, but we knew how to be frontline runners, workers, employees, and now we know how to be a CEO, creative, you know, VPs, yeah. and we know how to run business. Yeah. You know, just from having that experience and that corporate experience at first. So let me ask you this, because you said something that sounds it sounds just exciting to me. I would love to do it in the future. You said you're signing people now. What does that look like when you how are you selecting the golfers you want to sign? Like is that, hey, I gotta put them on a contract. Like, tell me a little bit about that process because I'm interested in signing yeah, yeah, yeah. people with, in various things that we're doing, so. Yeah, Um. what can I say? It's a, first off, you wanna give these guys, the pro golfers a chance. I, that used to be me. Yeah. Like, that was that's always been a goal of mine is to give these guys a shot. Yeah. I mean, that's all I ever wanted, yeah. you know? Um, like I said earlier, my the goal of this was to give this game and Eastside was built for everybody. I just wanted to go play golf. Yeah. I didn't have any other choice yeah. at the end of the day. I had to make this work if I want to actually pursue my dreams. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying I don't want to be known for Eastside, but it's not really that important to me. I want to be known for an ass on a golf course. Yeah. That's my thing, yeah. you know? So I know that these guys have the same mentality yeah. and they're willing to put it you know, fight tooth and nail every single day to make it happen and have these jobs. Yeah. They have side jobs just to fund their dream. Yeah. You know, outside of, I took the long, I took a, a, a way, a, another route, right. you know? A lot of guys aren't gonna start a business to fund their dream yeah. being a pro golfer. Yeah. But I knew I just had to take some steps back to 
you know, ultimately take so many steps forward. Yo, I've had the privilege to help hundreds and hundreds of people all around the world open up their own profitable event spaces, utilizing my signature formula. Number one, how to find a space. Number two, how to fund the space and how to automate the space. I've been in Atlanta, Georgia now living for two years. My spaces are still in Philadelphia operating, doing extremely well because we use the same exact formula that I break down, right? If you're interested in learning how we can help you, I want you to go to eventspacesecrets.com, watch a training or book a call with our team to see if you are a good fit. Again, this is for you specifically if you're looking for other ways to leverage your money and turn that into other streams of income, right? I don't believe there's a better time than right now for you to get tapped into the information in a game that can help you. So again, go to eventspacesecrets.com, watch the trainer and the book a call with our team to see if you're a good fit for this opportunity. Let's go. Let me ask you this. Um, so we talked about me starting to play golf. Somebody's looking at this. They never played golf. I want to get into golf. I'm sorry this is <laughs> probably an amateur question, but good. what should I be doing? That's not probably going to top golf, right? So what should if I want to start getting in the game so I could start coming to play with people like yourself, coming to learn, coming to network, what should be the first steps for somebody looking at this? Yeah, I would say, uh, honestly, find some used clubs. Okay. I mean, some used clubs that are your length. Yeah. You know, they don't have to be brand new. Um, go out there to the driving thrift range. Store. Yeah, you can go to the thrift store. Yeah. Or, you know, if we had a club, uh, a, a club partner, we could – Definitely, yeah, yeah. I could be saying her name right now. Mm, but, yeah, hey, uh, club partner, we need that. <laughs> yeah, but um, go find some clubs that play the game, sports or thrift store. Yeah, and just go to the driving range. Yeah. you know, hit balls for an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. You'll start to pick it up. You'll start to see, damn, like I hit that good. Like Sorry. I can see uh, why guys are really into this sport. But then also, you'll see the networking component take place literally at the driving range. Yeah. You're hitting balls next to this guy that a doctor, he might be on his lunch break, hitting balls because he loves the game so much. He's trying to beat his buddies during the week. So all of a sudden you're meeting these entrepreneurs, doctors, lawyers, people that uh, just run their own business and you're networking with them where you would have never met this person. This just opens the door for so many other people that you can meet, but at the end of the day, put forth some effort when it comes to golf. Yeah. You know, you'll see, you'll definitely see dividends, whether it's from your network, whether it's just from you being a better golfer and just getting out the house. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a game that a lot of guys can take advantage of. But at the end of the day, play against sports. Mess those clubs up. Yeah. I mean, like, get to a point to where, dang, like these, I got it. Now go buy you some new clubs. Yeah. You know, um, a starter set. You can go buy a starter set now, but it might run you anywhere from four to seven hundred, eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Thrift store played against sports, a hundred to two hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, and you can just mess them all How up. How much all a you good want set to. cost? Cause I know you talked about six hundred for the shaft. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming a good set, what like five to ten thousand for a professional set? A professional set maybe about eight thousand. Eight thousand. But a set that a good set that you can go to the let's say the superstore for, it would be uh Probably about fifteen hundred. Okay, got it. Okay, but then starter sets cost you, like I said, anywhere from three to six hundred. Man, this has been a good uh, interview. I, a question for you: uh, Anything that I haven't asked or that you haven't been asked in previous interviews that you want the world to know or anything like that? Um, I would say when it comes to design, mm. like I. It's so crazy. This is, I wouldn't say design is something new for me. Yeah. I've been designing shoes since I was six years old. Yeah. Wow. You know, I mean, I have like a book just like, wow. I mean, and my major was accounting, minor in finance though, you know, so really it, it's, it's crazy because there's so many people that are dope at design, yeah. but don't have a this story to tell mm -hmm. like how you truly get the attention of a Jordan brand or Nike yeah. or Adidas or Which is crazy. Out of all of these different companies, to be honest, is what's the story? What's the intention? I mean, like every single shoe that I came out with has intention. Yeah. Like mm. I'll even explain the first shoe that I came out with. There's a canvas on the bottom of it that it's called the Be Authentic Canvas. It's literally the logo uh, in water paint and oil and water paint. Um, 
on the bottom of the shoe. I even have my dad in the crowd, you know, watching. And I have kids having uh, East Side golf on, but it shows this is how I want golf to golf to look. Mm. You know, this is how I want golf to. This is how I envisioned it when I was a young kid. So even I uh, created the next five shoes, the Red Clay Collection. Yep. Last year they came out, yep. and <clears throat> the main premise behind that was to tell my story of being from the South. You know, and even growing up in golf. I mean, one of the shoes that I had is the Jordan Air, Air Jordan 12, uh, red clay mm -hmm. silhouette. And man, so on the back of the 12, it actually has red clay mud splattered on the back of yeah. it. But the reason that I did that was because, I mean, there were a few times when my mom had three jobs, you know, and I would have to find a way to the golf course, wow. you know, and I mean, it only happened maybe two or three times, but I walked to the MARTA bus stop yeah. with some forces on or something like that. By the time I get there, it's red clay mud splattered all over my shoes, mm. you know? And mm. then I get on the bus, take that all the way to the golf course. Now it's a non-hole golf course called Johnny White off Cascade. I uh, take that all the way over there and I end up walking maybe 36 holes, you know? And after the 36 holes, I mean, I got mud splattered all over my face, my pants, it's all over my shoes, mm. but it shows grit, determination, that I'm here to get it out the mud. Yeah, You know, like people were calling that the mud collection or the red clay collection, but it's, it really just told the story of what it's I'm powerful. willing to go through yeah. to make my dreams happen. I don't think I do a good job storytelling, like, cause now that you brought that down, I need to start, and this is any brand listening, how can you, make what you're doing connected with a story. Because now when I talk about the red, red clay collection or the mud clay, I know why that was now created. And it, mm -hmm. it, it's, it tells a good story. Like this is where I started at, right? Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's, it's powerful. No, I appreciate yeah. it. And then lastly, I will tell you, um, we have three more shoes coming out in September. Mm. And these shoes, I won't say the name of the collection, I'd rather for it to come out yeah, first, yeah. but these shoes hopefully will change the way um, traditional golf is seen, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and on top of that, teach black history, you know, to so many more, or just teach diverse history in golf to yeah. so many more diverse people that's never been interested in the game or that even see themselves even ever trying it. Yeah. Hopefully these shoes will teach you something to where you've seen where we've been yeah. or you've seen where the game of golf has been and where it could potentially go. Yeah, that's powerful. Did Jordan even have a golf shoe prior to Eastside's? Yeah, man. Yeah, he did. Okay. He did. Okay. He did. I'm glad it, it wasn't Eastside though. Yeah, 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 it wasn't Eastside yeah, yeah. though. It but, probably didn't uh, have that flavor like it did. Nah. <laughs> nah, um, it's crazy because working with MJ, yeah. one of the things he, I mean, get on the phone with him, yo, I mean, tells me and Earl, yo, you guys are pioneers mm. of the game of golf. Yeah. You know, we wanted to partner with you because we wanted that authentic way yeah. into golf, but then, but then showing that it's just a different way that it could be seen. If we can give you these shoes to give you that platform, you know, we tell the best stories of Jordan brand, let's do it. You know, it's a it's a no brainer. So, you know, Gentry and MJ have been complete supporters of of Eastside Golf since the since day one. Yeah, power, yeah like, I mean, it's it's crazy. I, I, man, I pitched this brand over 300 times, bro. Wow. Like 300 times in no at the no at the no. And one of the biggest yeses, one of the first yeses that I got was MJ. Because he saw exactly what I was thinking and he loved the game of golf. You know, and he knew what the game of golf could do for so many people. So yeah. that's my goal here. And that's the story for me. That's the story of persistence that I'm hearing, being consistent, staying prepared and being authentic. Like Absolutely. that's that's everything I hear in this conversation. And I just want other brands and people who go on like really to keep going. Like if you're able to do what you've done in four years, I'm like yeah. being authentic, you know, being consistent and, and being a pioneer. I mean, Everybody can't come up with that formula. That's, yeah, a, yeah, that's yeah. a tough formula, but yeah, yeah. it's possible though. So. Absolutely. And I want to thank you so much for coming on. Anything you want to share with the people, leave with them, let them know where they could tap in with the brand and everything like that. There's man. actually one more other thing I wanted to add. Yeah, if I could. For sure. Um, to run a business and to, and to learn all the ins and outs 
you know, this goes for, I mean, at any point in your life, but, you know, the younger professional, maybe teenagers, maybe I'm talking to right now, put yourself in as many uncomfortable positions Mm -hmm. as you can, learn as much, I'm talking, it might be a wild job that you had. Like I used to be a CNA at a nursing home off Panthersville Road in East Atlanta, but Learn as many things as you can. Put yourself in those positions because later in life, you're going to have to use those things. It's going to be something from all of those jobs that you can use to move forward. Don't be afraid of it. Dive into it and learn as much as you can. Because I use everything from every single job that I have right now in my job now. So that's crazy. Just learn it, man. Yeah, that's crazy. When you say that, I start, start thinking about every job that I had or even the other businesses that I start, I took something from them for me to be who I am now and to do the things that I'm doing right now Absolutely. from work ethic. I, I used to have a fruit truck and I was like, I would never want to go back to having a fruit truck, but it gave me work ethic. It taught mm-hmm. me customer service because I we weren't making real money or no money really. So I had to go above and beyond for my customers in order for me to make a tip so I can eat for the day. Absolutely. I mean, be able to go buy a rice and gravy that's a dollar fifty. I couldn't eat the profit because that was the fruit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was like, it's funny that you said, like, you know, everything that I've done yeah. is I'm pulling little pieces to build who I'm building and the companies that I'm building. Now. Yeah. So that's yeah. powerful. Bro. And, I'll, and I'll give you mine, um, just for last year example. I used to work for DirecTV. Yeah. And, but my job was at like Sam's Clubs, Best Buys, Walmarts. I was the guy who at DirecTV, hey, who's your cable provider? Yeah. Hey, get the hell away from me. Oh. And then turn around, hey, who's the cable provider? Big smile all day. Imagine having to do that for 10, 11 hours, yeah. you know? And I remember you one day, it. yeah, I remember one day I did that from about 7.30 or 8 a.m. all the way to 8 or 8.30 p.m. No sales, big smile all day. Hey, who's the cable provider? Get the hell away from me. You know, they just like, yo, I'm, you know, but perseverance and it's crazy the next day I use this ex- I use this example in some of my interviews for jobs mm-hmm. you know my first entry-level job um, the next day I came into that Sam's Club hey got to do it all over again there was a line that was outside about 15 people they were just like you know I'm sorry about yesterday you had the nicest just the nicest personality big smile and I want to see what you're selling today Wow. You know, I want an opportunity to, to buy because I like you, you know, and I use that example and I and I and that replays in my head with everything that I do moving forward. Yeah. If you can have that type of personality, people will continue to come back to the brand of whatever you do. Yeah. And I learned that from being <laughs> little Joe Schmo over at Sam's Club, just chasing down sales, yeah. you know, so. Bro, powerful, man. Story of perseverance, y'all. Um, I'll let everybody know they could tap in with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Instagram, at uh, Eastside Golf. Um, and then we have an app. Uh, just download the app. It's Eastside Golf, one word. So definitely come check us out. Let's go, y'all. So, man, with that being said, we're going to wrap this, this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one. Yes, sir.